Duke Shelley, who got waived by Chicago in the preseason, signed to the Vikings practice squad, later signed to the active roster in Minnesota. Now, that stemmed from Cam Dantzler getting placed on IR back in November. But before signing to the active roster, he did get elevated from the practice squad twice, playing special teams only against Philadelphia and Detroit. But his defensive debut, week nine against the Buffalo Bills, only played three snaps in that game, none bigger than the second to last play in overtime. A deep pass to Dawson Knox, Duke Shelley in coverage, gets the pass breakup incomplete. Admittedly, I had no idea who he was before that play. Now, after all the excitement and the shouting that I did in real time after that died down, I said, go ahead, pimp. You did that. And I thought it would end there. Turns out it was just the beginning because since that time, Duke Shelley played the remaining eight games of the regular season, including five starts. That's nine games total playing on defense. Eight pass deflections, one interception, and allowing a sub-50% completion rate. That's shutdown corner numbers. A previous practice squad guy. And not to mention the trash talking that he does after making a play on you. It can be demoralizing. And I don't think this is a fluke. Resign him in the offseason. This is going to be one of your starting outside corners for the foreseeable future. And next year, assuming that P2 comes back with Evans, Dantzler, Booth Jr. in the bullpen. I would say if you're going to go corner in the draft early with one of your first two picks, that would be your first or third rounder. You don't have a second round pick after the Hawkinson trade. In fact, this upcoming draft, the Vikings have just four picks to use in 2023. They're for sure going to trade down to get at least seven picks, I would imagine. But either way, if you want to go corner early with the depth that you have at outside corner, it would make sense to go nickel. That's the impact that Duke Shelley has made this season. I love a good underdog story, and he's legit one of my favorite players on the team. On another note, Kirk Cousins, a.k.a. Kirk Cochains. I hope we get the loud, hot takes pouring in this week, all the segments from the media talking about how Kirk ain't Jack in big moments. And I want him to hear it because we need Kirk to be at his best. And in my opinion, angry Kirk is the best Kirk. Whenever the man gets trashed extra hard by the media, that's when he shines the brightest. That's when he airs it out and doesn't settle for check downs on third downs. That version of Kirk Cousins is dangerous for the rest of the league. Just need that man to show up. And furthermore, I talked about this on Sunday. Going to dive into a little bit more detail here. I think the Vikings are best served going to a one-to-one timeshare at running back between Dalvin Cook and Alexander Madison. Cook at this stage is hurting the team more than he's helping. Four fumbles lost on the season tied with Alvin Kamara. For most fumbles lost by a non-quarterback, Dalvin Cook, four of his last seven games, he's averaged less than three and a half yards per carry. Two of those games, less than two yards per carry. And Alexander Madison, on the other hand, just five times this year with seven or more rush attempts, four out of those five times, he's put up four plus yards per carry. He's a bruising style running back. I trust him to get those tough yards. He delivers big pops. And especially if you want to keep running it up the gut, which you absolutely shouldn't, especially with the issues that we've had with the interior offensive line. But I trust Madison more to get those tough yards, especially as you get closer towards the goal line. Madison this year, 74 rush attempts. Dalvin Cook with 264. That gap needs to close immediately against the Giants on Sunday. And speaking of the Giants, center Nick Gates said about the Vikings that the Week 16 matchup in the regular season that without the mishaps, they could have won that game. Okay. He also went on to say that in regards to U.S. Bank Stadium, not really all that intimidating. He said, quote, Actually, I thought it would be a lot louder. I thought especially when our offense is out there, they would be a lot louder out there. But you know, they're Midwest people. They're too nice. And I can say that because I went to Nebraska. I went to Nebraska. I include myself in that one. At first glance, it's easy to read that quote because reading quotes or text messages, there's no context. You can't see the person's facial expressions or you can't hear the tone of said messages. But it's easy to read that quote and say, who the hell does this guy think he is? This in U.S. Bank Stadium like that? How dare he? I didn't take it like that. Now, I've been to U.S. Bank Stadium twice. Both times, it was loud as hell. Now, maybe when the Giants came to town on Christmas Eve, maybe it wasn't loud. Hell, maybe it was. I don't know, but... I'm choosing not to get triggered by what Nick Gates said. I do know this, that the first home playoff game since the 2017 playoffs in the divisional round, we're talking five years, the fans are going to be rocking. It's going to be a party. Don't worry about the noise because it will be there. 
Justin Jefferson, before the season started, I said that he's not going to get the triple crown, but he will get two out of those three categories, and I should have left it there. Instead, I decided to go the extra mile and say that he will be the league leader in yardage and touchdowns. Fast forward to now, he's atop the boards in yards and receptions. If not for the Packers game where they went all out to blanket 18, I think there would have been an emphasis in Chicago to get Justin Jefferson the Megatron record. But either way, this man is not even in his prime yet. I believe that starting next year in 2023, that's when he'll be fully unleashed at peak capacity for, I would say, at least four years. The league's on notice. And we're back at it tomorrow. We'll see you then.